Hello, good morning students. So today I am going to start the last chapter of your syllabus, chapter number 15, which is Air, air Around Us. Chapter 15, which is Air Around Us. Chapter 16, Garbage In and Garbage Out, which is not in your annual syllabus already mentioned. So chapter 15 is the last chapter for this session so air around us is a kind of chapter where you will get to know about different types of constituents of air means in the air what are the con constituents are there which types of gases are there in the air it is mixed up together so you will get to know about this and how much percentage of air is present means which type of air or which type of gas is present in air what is the percentage of the gases about that also you will know from this chapter and besides what are the constituents will be there in the air for each type of gas what are the beneficial effects or what are the usefulness of those gases about that also you will know from this chapter so basic keywords what you will know from this chapter or you will learn from this chapter like atmosphere carbon dioxide composition of air oxygen its uses nitrogen its uses or you can say oxygen cycle, nitrogen cycle, then smoke, windmill. About these things you will get to know from this chapter. Basically from this chapter you will, today you will learn specially atmosphere, then oxygen, then composition of air. Like these things you will get to know and rest of the part from the next videos. So I'm going to start. We have learned in chapter 9 that all living things require air. So we know that very well for all the living things uh, actually uh, to live or basically for the living things to live they require air. We knew that without water we cannot live a day but without proper amount of fresh air we cannot live a minute or you can say we cannot live more than two to three minutes if we will not breathe with fresh air or with fresh oxygen in means regular intervals but have you ever seen air we have uh, seen water but because that can be seen because it is a liquid form but can you ever seen air we are talking about all the time air 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 oxygen nitrogen um, hydrogen different types of gases we are talking about but have you seen air you might not have seen air but surely you must have felt its pressure in so many ways so we cannot see air that we know because it is gaseous particle and this is invisible. We cannot see. These are the particles of air cannot be seen with naked eyes. These are invisible. So we cannot see but though we cannot see the particles of air but we can feel the presence of air. We can feel the presence of air in many ways. So many examples we can give for its presence. So you notice it when the leaves of the trees rustle or the clothes hanging on a clothesline sway. So whenever the leaves of the trees will rustle, it will fall from the tree sometimes or the clothes hanging on a clothesline sway. Pages of an open book begin fluttering when the fan is switched on. 
so if you switch on the fan automatically if you will keep a book in front of it you can see the pages of the book begin fluttering when the fan is switched on the moving air makes it possible for you to fly your kite that is also possible so many students uh, will see the video they knew about that they are also sometimes flying the kites in the sky and it is only possible as air is present do you remember activity 3 in chapter 5 in which you separated the sand and sawdust by winnowing it is also we have done or the farmers can do the process of winnowing to separate the sand and sawdust by the process of winnowing as only the air is present winnowing is more effective in moving air so winnowing is more effective in moving air you may have noticed that during storms the wind blows at a very high speed so that is also we can feel during the storm just few days ago we have faced Amphan in the month of uh, in the month of may 20th may the last year 2020 we have faced Amphan before that in the year 2019 so many people have faced the storm thunderstorm phony so this way every year one or two or three types of uh, cyclones or super cyclones are coming these are only basically the high speed winds so as wind or air you can say moving air is generally known as wind generally it is air or atmosphere and moving air is generally known as wind so and if it will reach the speed at a certain limit or certain height that moment it is known as storm so you may have noticed that during storms the wind blows at a very high speed it may even uproot trees and blow off the rooftops that we know very well have you ever played with a firki so it is also given the image in your book firki that you know so have you ever played with firki activity one let us make a firki of our own following the instructions shown in the figure 15.2 hold the stick of the firki and place it in different directions in an open area move it a little back and forth observe that what happens does the firki rotate what makes a firki rotate moving air isn't it obviously the firki can be rotated only the in presence of high speed wind or moving air have you seen a weather cock it shows the direction in which the air is moving at that place so this weather cock also showing the direction of wind so which is very usual thing next part is 15.1 is air present everywhere around us so if air is present then it will give so many signals to us already we have um, get few ideas from different types of experiments and in the next part also we'll get to know about this more close your fist what do you have it nothing try the following activity to find out activity 2 take an empty open bottle is it really empty or does it have something inside you will answer it is it entirely empty or the bottle has something inside that turn it upside down is something inside it now 
so if you think inside the empty bottle you are saying empty but if it is actually empty then it is okay but if you think inside that bottle is something there then you will turn it upside down now dip the open mouth of the bottle now dip the open mouth of the bottle into the bucket filled with water as shown in the figure 15.4 observe the bottle does the weather does the water enter the bottle so if the water it will enter the bottle now tilt the bottle slightly so while you will pour the water inside the bottle that moment you just tilt the bottle slightly does the water now enter the bottle do you see bubbles coming out of the bottle or hear any bubbly sound can you now guess what was in the bottle so whenever the bubbles will come out during means while you will pour water inside the bottle that moments bubbles will come out now you can easily understand why the bubbles are coming outside due to the presence of air inside the bottle yes you are right it is air it is air that was present in the bottle the bottle was not empty at all as we as we have seen the bottle is empty we cannot see anything inside the bottle with our naked eyes that we know but air is invisible already mentioned in fact it is or it was filled completely with air even when you turned it upside down this is that is why you notice that water does not enter the bottle when it is pushed in an inverted position as there was no space for air to escape when the bottle was tilted the air was able to come out in the form of bubbles and water filled up the empty space that the air has occupied so this is very simple part now you can understand easily this activity shows that air occupies space it fills all the space in the bottle it is present everywhere around us air has no color and one can see through it it is transparent also so so many properties now you are getting for air it will occupy the space in which container you will keep that it will occupy the entire space of the container all the particles of air it is invisible we cannot see with our naked eyes which means it is transparent it has no particular odor means smell or it has no particular color also and one more thing all the particles are present in the gas it is always in motion it will never come at rest all the time it will be in motion so these are the properties up to this portion we have learned and in the coming portion we will learn more and more properties our earth is surrounded by a thin layer of air this layer extends up to many kilometers above the surface of the earth and this is called atmosphere already we have learned in our means previous classes when you were junior that moment six layers of air is there there are six layers of atmosphere not air basically you can say six layers of atmosphere are there the first layer is troposphere in which layer of atmosphere you are staying that is called at means troposphere after that stratosphere many more layers are there and the last layer of atmosphere is exosphere 
as we move higher in the atmosphere the air gets rarer so the density of air is maximum in this layer only but then also we cannot see the atmosphere with our naked eyes so as you go up in the atmospheric layer then the density of layer it will start to decrease maximum density is in our layer that is troposphere clear now can you think mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders with them while climbing high mountains so as already mentioned as you go up in the atmospheric layer the density of air it will start to decrease means all the components of gases it will also means it will also be there less so as you will go up in the atmospheric layer the amount of oxygen which is present in this layer but as you will go up in in the higher altitudes there the amount of oxygen will be less so due to lack of oxygen supply you have to carry or mountaineers have to carry the oxygen cylinders what now next topic is 15.2 what is air made up of or what is air made up of until the 18th century people thought that air was just one substance experiments have proved that it is really not so air is a mixture of many gases what kind of mixture it is or is it let us find out about some of the major components of this mixture one by one first water vapor we have learnt earlier that air contains water vapor we also saw that when air comes in contact with a cool surface it condenses and drops of water appear on the cool surfaces the presence of water vapor in air is important for the water cycle in nature that you have already learned from the last chapter evaporation and condensation these two major processes are involved with water cycle and is it can be possible only water vapor is present in the atmosphere next much more important component of air is oxygen in the presence of your teacher fix two small candles of the same length on a table light both the candles cover one of the candles with an inverted glass tumbler observe both the candles carefully do both the candles continue to burn or go off you must have observed that the candle covered with glass tumbler got extinguished after some time whereas the other candle continued burning what can be the reason for this think about it it seems that the candle got extinguished because the component inside of the glass tumbler which supports burning is limited most of the component is used up by the burning candles however the other candle is getting continued supply of air this component of air which supports burning is known as oxygen so you can say one more process is there combustion burning of fuel is known as combustion so the process burning of fuel is known as combustion so oxygen is a kind of gas which will help for combustion or for the process of burning it will help and it will also support means oxygen it will also support us for our breathing purposes so oxygen will also help us for the breathing purposes so students up to this portion 
today up to oxygen in your ncrt book page number 149 up to oxygen and from nitrogen it will be started in the next video so thank you students and have a nice day